it was on my bed and I knew I wanted to you know, like go to Toronto and be a country singer. And I was like, why isn't Dean Brody just calling me up? Like, doesn't he know? <laughs> I've literally never played a show in my life, never put a song out. I'm like, I don't get it. Like, how does he not know about me? That I was 18. <laughs> and I, that's how, you know, oblivious I was to how hard it is to get into this industry. And so when I moved to Toronto and I was 19 and I met my husband and he was like, you have the one ingredient that you really need. And that's like passion and hard work. And everything else is going to come with a lot, a lot, a lot of experience and work and um, getting your feet wet. So thankfully I had him to like put my head on my shoulders and, and tell me that I needed to like really get better. Welcome back to another installment of On the Porch with Front Porch Music, co-hosted by Logan Miller and me, Jenna Weiser. This week, we're diving deep with our guest on topics around cutting your teeth in the music industry, the importance of clocking your 10,000 hours, and more. She's a Front Porch 2022 Artist to Watch and a 2020 CMAO Rising Star nominee. Her latest single, Maybe I'm Still Drunk, was released last Wednesday and is available anywhere you get your music. We're excited to welcome singer-songwriter, multi-instrumentalist, and PEI native, Ali Walker. So pull up a chair and join us on the porch for our conversation. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited about your guys' new podcast. Thanks, so are we. Yeah, welcome to On the Porch. On the Porch. Love it. There's no context for that for you, but it's funny. It's cute. That's our theme song. But it's not me singing it. It's me. No, I'm just kidding. Even worse. Yeah, nice. we're super excited to chat about your new song today that you have coming up. Oh, we yeah. want to dig into career stuff a little bit with you. Um, mm-hmm. One thing we know um, from speaking with you previously and seeing some of your um, publicist work is that, you know, you've spent 10 years grinding and working and learning. And we really want to dig into that with you today, um, because I think sometimes people get super ahead of like, I want to be a star and I want to put music out right now. And there's a lot to learn still. So we really want to dive into that with you as well. <laughs> my 12 years ago I was like yeah it'll take like you know three months and I'll, I'll make it and here I am like 100 years later <laughs> <laughs> it, it probably feels that way yeah it does yeah but before we get into that like, why don't you tell us a bit about yourself like where like where are you from I'm from Prince Edward Island yes it's very small and I moved off that island when I was 19 to Toronto to have more opportunities in music because as many live venues are there there are in PEI it's just wasn't gonna cut it so I came here and I met my husband like within a year and he had been in the industry for ever uh he was touring around and he saw that I had potential but that I needed a lot of work um and so he kind of took me under his wing and we made a cover band and he you know just contacted me with anybody he knew whether it was in Nashville or Ontario to like write songs or just get my feet wet like in the studio or live so we definitely grinded it for the 10 years like you were talking about just you know doing as much as possible to get myself a little less green and then we put an album out together two and a half years ago where he produced it all and I uh, wrote it all and uh, that was my first like hey by the way I've been working on this thing for 10 years and here's Ali Walker. And then I spent two years and slash pandemic um, writing towards my next project, which is what's coming up now. That is the, the, like, the nicest story. Tell, tell Logan, you already told me this, but tell Logan how you and Eric met. It's cute. We met at a Rascal Flatts concert at what was Bud Stage. And I'm wearing a Budweiser t-shirt right now. <laughs> um, not for any purpose, but uh, or no, it was uh, Molson. It was Molson Amphitheater. Now it's Bud, t- Bud Stage. Mm. Um, just at a Rascal Flatts concert, I was working at a restaurant downtown Toronto called Grace O'Malley's, and I got a free ticket with a regular, and he was there with friends, and we were just introduced as like, "Hey, Ali's new to town, and she knows absolutely no one, and she needs a lot of help." And <laughs> we started writing songs together, and. We're just writing love songs and we fell in love uh, writing love that's songs. That's so cute. Oh my God. So like your whole <laughs> relationship started with music. Like, like music is like everything with, about you. <laughs> like, oh yeah. And like, I can't, 
I can totally get why people want like people that are opposites attract type thing. But for me, like we are the same people and we obviously have music in common and he helps me with my career. And like, I, I couldn't imagine not being with somebody that was in the music industry because it's so hard to understand, especially if you're an up and coming artist and you're in the middle of the grind. There's a lot of times where I was like, should I really like continue doing this? Like how long can I you know, do the grind. It was him that was like, uh, no, you've been doing this for so long and you're getting so much better every single day. He was the one that was pushing me to like, you know, keep going. So that's a really great support system. Like it, it like this industry is nuts. Like you do need someone to kind of spitball things off, even like from, like from our side, like the business side of it, my friends and family don't get it. They're like, they always are like, well, I don't like I'll vent to them. And they're like, I, I don't know what this means. It sounds stupid. And like so I'll be like oh, yeah. whatever. Jenna, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And Talk me it, through took this. My, it took my my really my friends and family a long time to like get behind me because they didn't see the work that I was doing and you know, playing at bars and and all that stuff. They were like, Okay, cool, no one cares. There's like five people in the audience. But it wasn't until, you know, you get the few interviews or you get the few things online where they're like, Oh, cool. Yeah, that's that's my friend. Like, oh, this is like <laughs> like serious. Like did it take a long time for your family and friends to like be like, Oh, this isn't just a hobby? Yeah. Well, they knew I came here for that. So I, you know, they knew a hundred percent I was in it and it was all I wanted to do because I left with like I was a thousand there when I left. So I had a thousand dollars in my bank account Ooh. and yeah, I, you know, I was 19 and I was like, well, see ya, I'm doing this. So, but it was, a, it was a long time until they were like, oh, okay. She is half decent, but you know, 10 years later. <laughs> you really graze over the fact that you were 19 years old and were just like, I'm moving to Toronto. Like that's terrifying. Yeah. Was that like a, yeah. huge, like a huge culture shock? No, because I, in my mind, I was always like a big city gal. Like I would always watch all of the like shows that were in New York City or Hollywood or LA. I'm like, I just wanted that life so bad. And I couldn't obviously get a visa at that time. So I was like, well, Toronto's the New York City of Canada. So <laughs> I was just so fearless. And like, I can't imagine being that fearless now. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. But thankfully, I was thinking correctly, because obviously, I have my whole life here now. Um so what was I going to say? I forgot. Anyways, yes, <laughs> I was very fearless and I could not have been fearless now. That's crazy. Yeah, that takes a lot of guts, like to just kind of up and leave, especially not knowing, like, did you know anyone in Toronto? I knew one person. So I slept on her floor um, of her bachelor apartment. She lived like one street up from Young and Dundas. It was right in the middle of everything. Ooh, I slept on her bachelor floor for like two nights and she was like, great to have you. Too small, get out. So then I, <laughs> I walked... <laughs> <laughs> literally I walked from what like uh Lakeshore to Eglinton on Young Street and just went to like every apartment building along Young Street saying like hey I need someone to live within like two days do you have any vacancies like it was probably September 29th or something and I finally found a place at Davisville which was like basically right before Eglinton and uh but like I couldn't sign a lease by myself because I was 19 and obviously didn't have a job and yeah, you're, so you're I, only a thousand air I was only a thousand there. So I like, that's not even first and last month's rent. So I had to like courier back and forth um, papers to my parents for them to sign. So obviously if I never paid rent, they would be on the hook, but yeah, it was, I mean, I was so fearless. It was crazy. But there was a lot of things that happened at home that made me be fearless because I was in university for one year. I did not enjoy it. I had a lot of issues with my roommates and friends where I was like, I need to leave. So <laughs> it really, really pushed me. I mean, it, it's funny what the, like what our bodies can do when, when we're pushed like that, like just resilience and just kind of getting in there and making, get, getting shit done. Oh yeah. Like you're on the brink. You can do anything. Mm -hmm. That's true. So we know, well, I, maybe I know, I don't know if you know, but um Ali's favorite instrument is the bagpipes. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not letting you go to that. <laughs> if you're saying, oh, no, that means you've only heard, like, terrible bagpipes. Yes, and I'll tell you exactly why. So I grew up, <laughs> where I grew up in Ottawa, um, my, like, my, like, like, we grew up on the Rideau River, on the, on, on the water, which okay. was awesome. But um, my neighbor two doors down, he was an old man, military, and he every morning at like 6 a.m. or like the ass crack of dawn, oh, yeah. he'd go onto his dock, raise a flag up the pole, 
and just <laughs> what the hell really yeah so i don't okay, have well like, the big pipes to me are a little triggering <laughs> I can understand that. And that's why when people have a sour reaction to bagpipes, I know that they've had a bad experience. <laughs> However, <clears throat> I swear I was half decent. And uh, I started when I was 12 and I was just for some reason good at it right away. So I was like, sure, I'm going to keep doing this. And I competed um, in a bunch of different like levels, like kept going up and my band went there's to- There's bagpipe, co- wait, there's bagpipe competitions and bagpipe yes. bands. <laughs> oh my god yeah so this you probably heard lot. of piling games before oh yeah 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 so there's like a uh, highland dancing and there's like they throw the thing yeah the, like wood um <laughs> but like a big part of that is bagpipe competition so there's tons of different types where like you know in music how there's like uh six eight music like uh, waltzes or there's you know fast music it's the same in bagpipes like there's like strath bays reels marches um pebras which are like 10 minute long songs anyways you go as a solo person and you um compete and like literally if you mess up one little baby chirp you're like done so it's a very meticulous like you you practice for 365 days to play this one three minute song it's crazy but it teaches you a lot of discipline but then on your solo stuff you also have your band stuff. So your band might have like, you know, 15 to 30 people in it. And same thing, one person messes up your song, like something that you've been practicing for, for an entire year is messed up. So we went to the North American Championships, was which was Ontario, which was very big for a PEI band. <laughs> and we were terrible for like all of the years before. So we made this bet with this uh, benefactor who was someone that paid for everybody's uh, lessons at this place that I went to called the College of Piping. And we bet him, we were like, um, if we win this, you get, you have to pay for us to go to Scotland to go to the world championships. And he's like, well, you guys were terrible for the last few years. So sure. <laughs> and we went <laughs> and we won first place at the North American championship. Oh my God. Our whole band. So he had to pay for us to go. Did he to make Scotland. good on it? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He's like literally the biggest supporter ever. Um, and we went to Ireland as like a pre- uh warm up we did a competition there i don't think we did very well but and then we went to scotland we got fourth in the world cool what in the in world huh. so like for our level how old were you at that point ish like 17 16 that would have been really cool to be in like scotland and ireland yeah but i was too. underage too and there was like some people that were of age and they were drinking beers and guinness and stuff so i kind of felt mm. a little left out but it was super fun. I was there with like all my best friends. I know you probably think I'm the most nerdy person ever, but in, <laughs> P- <laughs> in PEI, like literally bag fighting is not nerdy. For, or maybe I was just oblivious. <laughs> I'll take your word for it. <laughs> do you still have big pipes and like do you play ever? I have bagpipes. I don't play because I live in a condo right now. And it's one of those things. Oh, come <laughs> on. Those- but I have electric bagpipes that you can like oh. plug in MIDI to like I can literally plug it into the computer right now. Can you so when play, I was in, bring them out on stage sometime? I Why have. Don't you have a bagpiping solo in a song that'd be amazing. I'd actually be here for that. I think that like I totally will in the future. Like I did this bagpiping cover of um, uh, Old Dominion's like My Heart Is a Bar and I'm Closing It Down. I played bagpipes in it. It's on my TikTok and. Uh, I was gonna it say, was just this needs to be on TikTok. It is, but I didn't really have any followers there, and like honestly, no one gets the bagpipe. So every time I would pull it out at like a cover gig show, I would do like a whole five minute, uh, like little set of bagpipe songs, and like because there's like an ACDC song, there's a few different songs that have bagpipes in it, and people just didn't get it. So I'm uh, like, well, screw I it. I would I'm honestly, gonna... you know what? I'd actually enjoy. I think I would enjoy that. <laughs> when I say. And, Ali's favorite instrument is the bagpipes. I didn't expect this conversation to open up. I thought he'd be like, it's not the only thing she plays, though. No, sorry. I've been talking about it for the last 15 minutes. This is no, insane. this is like, yeah, this is my, like, yeah. This is I, funny. I love it. I love I'm, it, too. I'm going to go down a bagpipe wormhole, I think, on YouTube later. And, <laughs> yeah, and, try, to, cool. and try to appreciate it. And try to get this And you know stupid... what? I made really good money playing bagpipes. I was, like, what, 13 How? to because my mom worked at the it's called college of piping it was but it wasn't actually a college just a facility and she was the accountant there and she's the one that got me into it and she would be the one that would like book me or like put a good word in and I would play every every 
funeral, every wedding, every, uh, like, in PEI, people like to be marched into meetings or things. So I would march people into things. Into I would... meetings. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, you know, government meetings or whatever. And <sighs> like three times a week, I would go to this, the end of a cliff and I would play at the end of the cliff while a tour bus of like, usually Quebec people would cut, like old people would come in and they'd be like, oh my God, there's just a bagpiper here at the end of the cliff on P- <laughs> Prince Edward Island. How <laughs> <And that's> you. <laughs> That I love me. that for you. <laughs> I yeah. honestly would have never guessed that anyone could make money doing bagpiping. bagpiping. Oh, I mean, I guess un- I guess it makes money. sense. Wow. Like, no matter what, if you want me to come out for like one song, it was probably like 150 to 300 bucks. I'm picking up the bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> but I knew I couldn't do it for like an actual career. Like, you can't make a full living at it. But mm-hmm. I did get a, a full scholarship to a University of Arkansas for bagpipes. <laughs> but I didn't take it. This is blowing my mind <laughs> in the yeah. best way possible. That's Pretty so weird. I funny. wish I could actually use it for a career, but here I am, a country singer. <laughs> now I'm just doing regular music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll settle for the guitar. Yeah, settle for something that could actually make me money someday in life. But... Well, before we go on, let's uh, take a quick break. <laughs> You've done very well on TikTok. Well, you know what? I'm trying. I haven't posted in a while, actually. I have, I it's like literally on my calendar, make TikToks today <laughs> now that I have makeup on. But it's a, it's an effort. And I'm sure you guys know that. Like just to even get on the right algor- algorithm was hard because I've seen people, you know, be country singers, but then they'll post something completely different. Like they're doing a mm-hmm. DIY project or something. And you literally have to stay within your algorithm because as soon as maybe something pops off that's not what you want it to be, your account is just like, you know, pigeonholed to that. So I said right off the get-go, I'm only going to post, you know, like my original music, uh, demos, stay within the country vein so I can just like hammer out that country music audience. And it seemed to have worked. So that's good. I would say so. I mean, your videos have gone like reached very far. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's even, it's harder now. Like it's even like Instagram back in the day, like it was easier to get Instagram followers and now it's hard to get Instagram followers. I think TikTok's taking that turn where they're not sending so many random videos viral. Like you really have to like put effort into your videos. I feel like now to uh, create that. And you can even see it now. Like so many people got signed record deals like a year ago, but I think, you know, labels are saying, okay, maybe just one viral video isn't you know, worthy of like a full shebang, like just because you have one. And a lot of times maybe it is like, there's tons of artists that are killing it um, more than just having one song. But there is a lot of artists I've seen that have already trickled off um, because they're realizing, oh shit, I really need to follow up. Well, and even just like having one song, but then there's nothing to follow up, follow up with. So you like, it's months where there's almost silence. Oh yeah. And like, I, what I did is, you know the usual like hey what do you guys think of this song and a lot of times when people do that it's like a demo and but they already have the fully recorded song done ready to go and that's more of like a pre-save campaign that they do Mm -hmm. where it's like um here's the song what do you think okay guys it's coming out next week pre-save it and then like they really get that um instant gratification like the audience does but for me i was doing that to literally have opinions of like a large audience decide which songs were going to be on my album because you guys know it's not cheap to record an album and a lot of times I don't know what an audience will like so I just threw a bunch of demos out at people last year and whatever ones like did you know somewhat well those were the ones that I invested in and recorded Mm -hmm. but the ones that did really well people are like okay we want this now like I get (laughs) messages every day about songs that aren't out yet but that are like in the queue. Um, How many of them are from Jenna? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) But it's like, I feel terrible. Like they're, I can't reply to every single person, but I also don't want people to like go away and not Mm -hmm. be interested anymore. And I was worried about that because my first single that I put out from that whole like TikTok thing was my first song, Country Music. And it had been like eight months since it kind of popped off on TikTok. And I was worried that they were going to be gone. Uh, but it ended up being really well. Like the pre-save campaign went 
awesome. I gave away a Yamaha guitar, which I think helped because people were going to potentially win a guitar, which was awesome. Uh, but they stuck around. And my next song um, is a song that they haven't heard. So I'm I was sure just going to people... say that. I don't think that was on TikTok. <laughs> no, because I didn't write this next song. So I don't know the whole like, am I allowed to do that when I haven't released it yet? You know what I mean? So I didn't want to do the whole, like, this is the first song that I've, I'm going to release that I've never written. And I, I've always been open to it, but I didn't think that like, I actually would, or that I would in, like, like a song. There's so many good songs and songwriters out there. I don't know why I wouldn't think that, but um, this song came along from my producer, Danik, uh, Dupel and he was like this song is so fun and I think it would just really add to your album I think that's the whole point of like recording songs that are songs that you haven't written is like just to kind of add in the things that maybe you don't know how to write <laughs> yeah. or that like just different vibes and stuff so I've got two songs on my album that people have not heard which I think Ooh. is a good thing because TikTok <laughs> has heard everything. And like TikTok isn't necessarily like my whole audience. So thankfully I'm not giving like everything away to everybody, but there's a song called Hometown Home and I literally get like hundred messages a day saying when the hell is this coming out. And I've so- never messaged you about that song, but I actually am excited because I've seen it. You've played it live a few <laughs> times and I'm like, I love that song. Yeah, I love it too. But it's like a summer song. So I'm waiting for summer-ish to be able to do like the video content for it. True. Yep. And so, but I might actually like go to California or something, depending on COVID to try and just like bang, bang out that video. It's so fun. You need some we'll help, see right? How the, we'll see how the budget. <laughs> I'm the budget happy. I'm happy to tag along. No problem. Because <laughs> I want like, obviously summer vibes in the video and that's not going to be Canada until like <laughs> June. Yeah. So that's true. Let's talk about maybe I'm still drunk because it's out this week or last mm-hmm. week. Yeah, yeah. So tell us about it. It's not the f- yeah. You, you didn't write it, but you know you love it anyways. No, I love it honestly. Hannah Ellis, who's a, an artist in Nashville, she she's co-wrote so it. Good. Oh, she's so good. And um, Alex Masters, who's a, a, a songwriter um they sent it to me and the demo was so good I was like I don't even know if I can do this justice (laughs) um but you know Danik obviously did an awesome job and I'm super excited to put it out and it's about waking up hungover which I like to say I have quite a bit of experience in never experienced it no (laughs) (laughs) wasn't to write off yesterday (laughs) and literally this is also what I do going through what the heck happened last night or like what did I do I had a lot of extra (laughs) liquid courage who did I talk to and it's about talking and like hooking back up with your ex um but sometimes that's a bad thing sometimes that's a good thing for me liquid courage gives me like a little extra personality and I like sometimes do some great things with liquid courage but sometimes (laughs) I do some questionable things with liquid courage so I think this is just such a fine light song that like literally everybody can relate to Mm, that's awesome I can't wait for it to, for like the world to hear it it's yeah. uh it's good and I did a video for it and it's coming out like a week or two after and I I just love it it's so cool I'm doing all of my um video co- I have a video for every single song coming out and I have like all the videos banked up already for the next few songs and I just like I can't wait for everybody to see them all that must be so like <laughs> I, I don't know what the word is uh like exciting and also like so like you must be anxious to just get that stuff out there since it's like it's already done it's ready to go yeah and it's especially like I was talking about how people on TikTok are like where's this song it's been forever well there's a song that I know is coming out with my album which is in like probably fall which seems forever away but I'm like it's coming but really not for another like <laughs> nine months you know what I mean so yeah I've never been this prepared where I have like a whole year of releases in the bank the videos everything done but uh I was lucky enough to get a grant through factor which is like so hard to get and it's a huge deal so much congrats oh thanks it take it took me three times to get it and I was you know obviously devastated the first two times I didn't get it because it's a huge help but there's no better time that I could have got it than for this project. So for something like that, you have to have your full shebang ready, um, mm-hmm. like marketing plan, tell them the songs, why these are the songs and 
it was like a 65 page application so yeah they're, wow. they're, they're, the, they're crazy that's i didn't realize they were that big yeah well you can do what you want basically like if you want to obviously put your best foot forward but because we had such a like big marketing plan and idea for this whole project i think obviously that's the reason we got it and uh it just made me super prepared for this entire year of releasing songs and then also recording everything in advance. I just love having that in my back pocket because when you don't have music coming out and you kind of just feel like, eh, like, what am I doing? Or like, it's hard just working towards something but not really having like a goal of putting anything out. And it kind of, was- it, it kind of feels like you're always in like catch up mode. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I'm even thinking of like what's after the album next year. So how like, do you think some of this might have been different if not for like the pandemic and having extra time because I'm sure you spent tons of time writing over the pandemic too, right? I know it feels it's terrible to say this, but like I'm grateful for the <laughs> pandemic. <laughs> like obviously for not for reasons I'm not grateful. Like I had to yeah, see my parents for 2 years, you know, goes without saying. But for me to be off of, you know, having to work and get having to do anything like I just had so much time and I wasn't going to apply for a factor grant again because I was like so down about not getting it and I was like no throw it I'm not gonna get it I had the time because of COVID and that's the only reason why I applied for it so because of COVID I got that grant and because of COVID I got to write with a bunch of people and I got to work with my producer and have the time to like do all this stuff so and I joined TikTok because I had time. So, <laughs> same. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm that's, grateful. That's kind of the way that I feel about the pandemic too. Like professionally, it's been great in a lot of ways, yeah. but per- personally, it's been a gong show. Yeah. But uh, like professionally, like with Front Porch, we really took the last year or two to connect with as many people as possible and just kind of understand what what we want to do and how we want to grow. And that's how this podcast came came to be as well um yeah yeah, so like there's really weird mixed emotions with this pandemic it's like always bittersweet I feel like that's what every like that's a common theme like there's obviously the horrible things that are happening but there's always like something that we've been able to do and I mean we're also all in positions of like a privilege where our jobs yeah Yeah. we're able to thrive there are people who obviously haven't so that's obviously Mm -hmm. tough too but I think because we've we're in these positions where we can dedicate Mm -hmm. our free time to continuing to work that's been like really really helpful Oh gosh, yeah, and like praise government assistance during this time for or for you know the music industry that has obviously helped, and um, like some live gigs and then some like it it was obviously tough on on us financially, yeah. but um, I'm grateful and I was putting it off forever writing songs with people on Zoom prior to this. Yeah. Um, and even for like the first few months I'm like no I'm not doing it there's a lag you can't like play guitar together or anything and then I was like well it seems like this is not going away so let's just write songs together and then I met so many people I wouldn't normally have met so I'm grateful for that and I connected with uh, some of my main songwriters on this Dustin Bird and Brian John Harwood um, through the pandemic really because they did a song called together we're strong and it mm-hmm. was like a, a pandemic song and had a bunch of people on it and they had me on it even though they didn't know who I was and we just hit it off <laughs> and I asked them to come over during the pandemic which I don't know if they were allowed <laughs> to say that but they did and it was all safe and they stayed over for two weekends and we just wrote like a ton of songs together and um, we just like connected and I really needed that like I needed people who understood what I wanted to do for this project like I'm a big um tomboy and I I knew I wanted kind of like guy energy on this album I love writing with females too like don't get me wrong but I just knew that I wanted like some guys to understand what I wanted like I love uh Thomas Rhett and Hardy and Morgan Wallen if I'm allowed to say that I love his (laughs) songs um so I wanted that vibe but like girl Mm. Dustin Bird and Brian John Harwood, like they collaborate so well together. So like the three of you, the three of you are like the three amigos. Like the <laughs> like the con- like the content that you three have been putting out the last twelve months have been really cool to see. Yeah, thanks. And like Dustin's obviously popping off, which was so cool to see him go from you know kind of where I am now to you know seeing him get the record deal, seeing him uh, do more and more things. It's been really cool mm-hmm. to see your little buddy, you know, get a record deal. 
I have something with Brian coming out in <gasps> a few months too, which is so fun. Ooh. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> Ooh. We shot like a tiny bit of the music video. You just give me more ammo to be like, hey, can I hear this now instead of... <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm cool with that. <laughs> Nothing makes Jenna happier than being the first to hear something. Hearing unreleased music is my favorite thing. You just like feel a little bit of empowerment that you know something no one else knows. I'm in on yeah. the secret. <laughs> She's a yeah. total, total, total hipster. Stop it. I love it. I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, yeah, you like put your 10,000 hours in, which for those who are, who don't know, like technically it takes 10,000 hours to become an expert in just, something. Just listen to Dan and Shay. 10,000 10, hours. Oh my God. 10,000 hours. <laughs> I didn't even connect the dots on that specific thing. I was, <laughs> I was, a, psych stu- I was a psych student. We literally went through the 10,000 hours study. <laughs> I'm such really? a nerd. That's so oh funny. Oh my God. When I see 10,000 hours, I'm like, you want to become an expert in something. And this is, yeah, that's so funny. Anyways, I digress. <laughs> but like dedicating and like being dedicated to learning and wanting to be good before, you know, just being like, hey, here I am, right? Like, mm-hmm. and like the skills that you built and then like the toolbox of skills that you came, you know, to r- working on your actual music you've released with. And how did you decide like, okay, I've got it and I'm ready to do this? Well, when I was in university, I was on my bed and I knew I wanted to like go to Toronto and be a country singer and I was like why isn't Dean Brody just calling me up like doesn't he know (laughs) I've literally never played a show in my life never put a song out I'm like I don't get it like how does he not know about me that I was 18 (laughs) and I that's how you know oblivious I was to how hard it is to get into this industry and So when I moved to Toronto and I was 19 and I met my husband and he was like, you have the one ingredient that you really need. And that's like passion and hard work and everything else is going to come with a lot, a lot, a lot of experience and work and um, getting your feet wet. So thankfully I had him to like put my head on my shoulders and, and tell me that I needed to like really get better. Um, And it was something I normally like, quit things if once I get bored of them because I'm usually this is terrible this sounds bad but I'm usually good at things like right off the bat like (laughs) sports I know it sounds so like lame but growing up like I did so many things I did all the dances all the musics and I just like I picked it up quick and then as soon as I became like a certain level I was like okay I'm bored it's not hard for me anymore I want to move on but for singing and music it was or like playing guitar and everything it was hard So it was something finally that I could like work on and see progress slowly. And a lot of times you think that you're not getting better, but then you look back at like a video where you were Mm. singing and it was like totally out of tune. So to me, that was like something I could grasp onto and like get better at every year. And um, I just literally played all the bars and a lot of it is um, mental too, where it was like, I'm not good enough. And then you have to work through of like, am I just not prepared enough or do I really need to get better at this or that? So I, I took singing lessons from a bunch of different people. I took like performance lessons. I took guitar lessons. I went to Nashville, wrote a ton of songs with different people. I uh, went in the studio. I learned um, like a recording, how to record stuff myself. And I edit all my own vocals and I uh, can record everything, mostly myself. Obviously my husband helps me as well. I learned how to edit videos. I learned how to like do photography and videography and graphic design. So learning everything on your own can also give you great perspective on once you can hire people, like what you want and how Mm -hmm. to verbalize it to them. And the fact that I've played like drums and guitar and bass, I can now have a band. I don't necessarily want to be the band leader, but I can at least kind of talk to people properly of knowing how things work. And again, with like the, the graphic design and the website and all that stuff and the video, I'm at a point now where I can finally hire people because I don't want to do everything myself anymore. Preach um, it. <laughs> but I think it's a good thing for artists to like know every side of their business. And I think, I think that you have is, to. Yeah, it should be a part of your 10,000 hours. And I'm so glad that I, I did. And I never became an expert in any of those things. But I am glad that I at least got my feet wet. And it's like the business side too, like knowing how to do bookkeeping and 
I don't know how to do taxes, but my mom knows how to do my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> and just like going to all of the Canadian music weeks and the CCMA weeks and stuff, it's like that all adds in your 10,000 hours. And I'm glad that I, I did all of that. I think people have to do that because this industry, especially with, with indie art, independent artists, it's notorious for people kind of screwing with artists, like saying, I'll do this for you. I've got your marketing plan. Don't worry about it. But then if you don't, if, if you don't have at least some understanding of what goes into it and what you're expecting, then you have no idea what that, what those people are doing. And there are so yeah. many, unfortunately, so many people who take advantage of that. Yeah. And if I, and cause I'm looking to obviously grow my team like over time and I have like marketing team and PR and video now and photography. And obviously I want to get to the point where I'm having like a record label and management and booking agent, but I now know exactly what I'm looking for. And the Canadian music industry is so small that I know like what I'm not looking for or Mm. uh, because I've been in the industry for so long. I know this person worked with this person and it didn't work out for them, but maybe it was a good thing, but maybe it was a bad thing. And that, you know, it is so small in this industry that like, I do know exactly what I'm looking for now. I think um, it has to be rewarding to knowing that like you did, fig- you have figured it out yourself and you, if you have to, you can do all of this yourself, right? You're like, you're handing things over because it's time to like grow your team. It's not because you're like, what the fuck am I doing anymore? Right. That's pretty <laughs> yeah. cool. No, that's so true. Yeah. And I do see a lot of artists doing like the opposite. Like I can tell they haven't been around for a long time. And sometimes those people slip through the cracks and they do great. And uh, they just hand everything over their, to their team. They've played like literally one show in their life, but for some reason they're way better than I ever was <laughs> like after 10 years. And like that hurts sometimes to watch <laughs> like seeing people get those opportunities that you've been like literally working for forever but you also have to realize like maybe the deal they did was terrible and they're making like one cent. Whereas if I'm have the upper hand, I have a whole album done and I'm shopping it around or whatever I'm doing, trying to get a deal. Like I have a, a better hand at getting a better deal because you have this leverage. And I like to like kind of compare myself to artists that are on labels and see if I can get these certain opportunities by myself, whether that's like, the cover of a a playlist like let me try and get that myself they're brand new signed to this label um i feel like i can compare myself uh, but they do have that team but i'm going to try and get it without a team Mm. (laughs) that's also a key to success too is always comparing upward because when you're comparing to people who when you're like oh this is an independent artist at my level and i'm doing better than them you're never going to get better if you have nothing to like you know yeah if you're not if you're not looking for like what you can do or what you should be like looking forward to and always looking upward, then you're not, you know, you're not like progressing either. Right. Yeah. Compare, exactly. compa- comparing can be a little tricky though, too. Totally. Cause like you yeah. can go to, you, you can go down a path, like an unhealthy path of like, why isn't this happening and just getting into self pity, but literally there's daily life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, also do that. <laughs> me too. And it's, it's like, so a, hard. it's hard to find that healthy balance because like you do always have to have inspiration and, and and goals of of looking upwards but it's really tricky for it to not turn into a downward spiral i find that the most difficult balance like why do i want this do like is it really going to change my life or my career do i just want it because this other person got it um and then yeah you see these tiny milestones that you did really want like i have a whole um excel spreadsheet vision board like I have my actual vision board but I actually have like you know what I want in the next year what I want in the next five years and when I see other artists get that that I like we were saying that I feel like maybe got handed it because they knew this person or that person it was just like sometimes you see people that get things that you feel that they aren't ready for but you wish that you could have and you're like oh man that hurts my soul a little bit but it's like screw it you and can't then there, but, yeah and then there's even things where like this person got this thing but like I'm jealous or I, I wish I got that. But they're like, wait, mm-hmm. that's not something I even wanted. Why am I comparing no. myself to that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, same thing, yeah. It's such a balance of like, why do I want this? Am I really jealous? Who cares? And them getting it also doesn't change a single thing. In yeah, because like there's, there's room for everybody. <laughs> there is, it's, it's so true. And sometimes that's hard to wrap your head around because you're like, especially as females, you're like, oh, they got this opportunity. That means there's not a lot of room for another female to get that opportunity because it's mostly males who get this opportunity. And- it's oh, like, that's oh. such bullshit. I hate that so much. 
<laughs> it's true. Like you think, oh, this record label has one female. Oh, that's all they're probably going to have. So they're, they, don't, they don't have any more room for a female. So you're like, okay, well, that record label is off my list. Or, yeah, that part of this yeah. industry just drives me nuts. Yeah, it's, but they'll they'll sign like two or three guys that sound the exact same. But don't it's even just get the me way started. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. It's just the way it is, and it's like stuff like that that you also need to put in your ten thousand hours that you need to learn. And one, my favorite quote that I learned was from my producer when I worked with him like ten years ago. He said, "You only get one first impression." And I was going to Nashville when I was like 19, 20. And when I was terrible and hmm. I could have like moved there, you know, played the rounds, but like I would have been known as Allie Walker then. And people might remember me as terrible. And <laughs> it's so hard to get that back. Um, so I knew that once I came out, I needed it to be like, you know, Allie Walker 5.0. <laughs> that, that's really good advice actually. I really like that. Yeah, I see a lot of people like put a ton of, they go to radio with like their first single that they've ever put out and like going to radio is like, you know, four or five grand. And it's just not worth it if you are completely unknown. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, radio also has their biases as well and their ridiculousness. And like they're, it, unless you're signed, the chances of you getting regular airplay is pretty, pretty low. Oh, very low. So it's not even on my radar unless I have a good plan. And mm-hmm a team that can actually bring it to radio properly. So we're sort of coming to the end here, um, but we know you have new music coming out soon. Yeah, I've got basically songs coming out like every six to eight weeks throughout the year. Thank you. you Can I just say thank you? You just made (laughs) that day. (laughs) I think I'll take like a little break here and there or whatever, like summer, people don't like listen as much. So um, it'll be like from now until summer, every like eight weeks and then, um, the album in the fall basically gave me my whole plan. Yeah, that's <laughs> the insight. I'm looking forward to it every six to eight weeks. <laughs> yeah. She'll be she'll be in your DMs every six weeks. I will. How no, about now? <laughs> no, it'll be every like five weeks. Being like, can I have that? Can I have that one now? God, yeah. Be, why are you I'm like? Just that? kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> the other day though, I was like, Pickles, her dog. Pickles want like told me he wants you to send me your new song. <laughs> She's like, okay. <laughs> I believe it. That little rascal always gets in my DMs. <laughs> he knows what the people want. Yeah. Oh, pickles. He's silly. Well, well, Allie, where can people find you? Allie Walker Music on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and YouTube and Allie Walker on Twitter. A L L I. And you can also but find also, Al- I guess people want to like listen to the music. You can you can listen to it on Apple and Spotify <laughs> guess, and yeah. Amazon and all the things. <laughs> I guess I'm a musician, not a bag player. You might want to go on Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you can also find Ali all over frontporchmusic.ca. Um, she's a, she's yes, actually. Yes, and thank you, thank you so much for making me a nine artist to watch in 2022. Oh, you are. How welcome. could we not? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's I gonna, appreciate it. It's I want to let you guys hear for you. <laughs> I, I I mean all I can do is put music out try my hardest and a lot of the times it's up to like the fairies at Apple and Spotify and Amazon to like put your music on things yeah. yeah pick you or like a like you guys actually give a crap and like you know have a chat with me or put me on your website so a lot of it is like literally up in the air you just as an artist can try your hardest and put your music out and hope people like you <laughs> well Ali we like you thank you I like you too <laughs> thanks so much for joining us on On the Porch with From Porch Music I love talking to artists and digging deep into the world of Canadian country music and I'm so excited you joined if you liked this episode please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast that's the easiest way for you to support this show you may even get a shout out so we'll see you in a couple weeks next time on the porch On the Porch with Front Porch Music is hosted by me, Logan Miller, and Jenna Weiser. The theme song was written, produced, and performed by Owen Rigling.